there's been more news about OpenAI's corporate structure, which is kind of the gift that keeps on giving to us as pundits and to them as, as people trying to operate this company and this nonprofit and this convoluted mess. The rumors are that they're trying to rotate everything over to from a nonprofit that owns a for-profit that's capped and this weird convoluted diagram. Maybe Justin, our editor, can put the diagram up on the screen for those watching on YouTube. And they want to simplify that whole thing down to what they call a B Corp. Most companies in the US of any note are what's called C Corps. And what that means is that the shareholders, especially the board and the executive team, have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize profits and value creation to the other shareholders. A B Corp adds one simple sentence or concept to that, which is they have a responsibility to maximize shareholder value and to make sure that the company is upholding its mission-based goals, whatever those might be, so that they get to state their own goals. And so you might see B Corps where they have a sustainability message. They have a climate change message or a mission. And in this case, one would imagine OpenAI's mission would be to you know, make AGI, artificial general intelligence, available and safe for the world. So then the shareholders, the operators rather, and the, and the board would have that commitment baked into law without a complicated and convoluted uh, nonprofit structure. So just a few other details on this, and, and I want to get your feedback on this, Amir. Related to this, they're allegedly looking to raise a hundred billion dollars from some of the top companies and funds in the world, Thrive Capital, Microsoft. Apparently Apple was in the deal, but the rumor is that they pulled out. Tiger Global. Tiger Global. And then also allegedly, Sam Altman would be getting 7% of this new structure. And that was the word going around for a few days. But more recently at an all hands, he called this ludicrous uh, and said, it's just, that's just not a real number. And it's not true what's being reported. One last detail, because it, it's likely related, is that a number of executives have basically en masse quit. And, you know, this is not the first time and it may not be the last time. But a number of executives and key people left, including Mira Miradi, who is the very visible CTO and was the co-founder, as well as Bob McHugh, OpenAI's chief research officer, and Barrett Zof, a research VP. These all happened pretty much on the same day, uh, which is, I mean, you know, there hasn't been this kind of attrition at a hot startup, except maybe during... The, the times when Travis got, you know, shoved out the back door at Uber. Uh, and that was after, you know, a year, year and a half of very visible turmoil in the market. But the, the, I think the, the weird thing here is that this company is early in its evolution. It's on track, or it really is one of the most important companies in the world already after just, you know, 24 whatever months. And there is no visible turmoil, you know, other than like people getting fired or quitting. It's not really clear what the hell is going on? Like, why? Why is this happening? I have some ideas, but this is a long preamble here, Amir. What is your thoughts on the restructure, the fundraise, the 7% and the quitting, which I, you know, I think is all related. And then I'll, I'll share some thoughts as well. Okay. Awesome. So first of all, I think B Corp is, is okay. I invested in one B Corp, uh, a company called Blue Sky. I think B Corp would have probably saved Twitter from being bought by Elon because he kind of shitted on their mission. So they could have potentially said, no, we don't want to get acquired. And a C Corp does not have any of the, those uh, protections. So any public C Corp is 100% open for any acquisition, even if the company that is acquiring it is going to completely destroy the mission that they're on. So a B Corp is actually good restructures happen all the time. I'm not worried about restructuring. I'm more worried about the attrition. I think that what you see in big companies, what you see things delivered are usually the work that has been done three months ago or six months ago. So attrition that we're seeing right now will hurt us in three to six months. So there's like a delayed effect of this. And I'm worried about that because like these people are clearly very, very smart and very influential in the company and them leaving the company will have a delayed effect. So what will happen in the market is that people will say, oh, they left, they continue to deliver, not knowing that what they're delivering is all is basically what they've built one or two quarters ago. 
The last thing I'll say about these trio is that like raising a hundred billion dollars sounds to me insane because like, how do you calculate the return on that? Sam Altman <laughs> needs to promise trillions and trillions of dollars for these funds to actually make the money. Basically, he's telling them that he's going to own every software in the world. That merits that type of investment. Because if not, I don't understand how you make money and multiply on a $100 billion investment. So let me engage with two of those topics, the attrition and the, the return on investment. I think the benign explanation here is that these people signed up for a research company and they're now part of a for-profit commercial enterprise. That's a possible benign explanation. And I think there's maybe a 10% chance that that's the reason. I think the more craven or cynical or likely explanation is not some crazy internal turmoil. I think that these people are seeing billions of dollars on the table for each of them personally. And they're like, why do I need to stay in this wrapper in Sam Altman's, you know, playhouse when I could step out like Ilya did and raise billions of dollars for myself and run my own show. And so I think the rapid valuation increase and the commensurate increase in their personal value is connected to this. They're like, man, we can ditch this thing and we can personally just grab billions of dollars on the speaking circuit, on other companies as advisors or fractional executives or as founders of their own thing. There is just m money going to be thrown at them from everywhere. And I actually think that that's a meaningful reason that I don't think people are talking enough about. So I, I don't think that, that I, I wouldn't bet on that. Because I think if you are on a rocket ship, it's really, really hard to leave a rocket ship. When I was at Slack in the early days, nobody left. The company was doing great. Everybody's doing great. You leave because you have a shitty manager. You leave because you are disencouraged by the company. You leave because there's a crazy, amazing opportunity somewhere else not to become a consultant for a partial executive. No, I, I don't. I think it's not the same thing, Amir. I think when Slack or when Uber or when, you know, Meta was on the rise, there wasn't some monumental platform shift where anyone and their dog wanted to pay for this kind of expertise. And that expertise was so tightly concentrated in such a small group of people. I mean, you only have to look at our last story today where Google hired an AI rock star back for $2.7 billion with a B. Elia raised billions of dollars for his company that when he left OpenAI with nothing, like probably not even a pitch deck. He probably didn't even walk into a VC pitch, right? And so th there's a difference between being an executive at Uber or Slack or whatever and saying, ha ha, I'm leaving to go do my next thing. Give me billions of dollars. <laughs> That's not what would have happened. But I think that is going to happen for Mira Marathi. And it did happen for, for Elio. But they are changing the world. It's really hard to leave something that has such a big impact on the world. Unless there, I, I, you might be right and we'll never know. We might never know. My bet is that people leave because of the mundane, shittiest thing that, that all of us deal with. I, a shit I think manager. I think that's true, except when you start talking about millions and billions of dollars for someone's personal pocket. Just think, right, if you have the best manager in the history of the world at the most important company in the history of the world, and someone says to you, hey, man, I would give you like a billion or two billion to come and run this other thing. You get to continue to work on AI and it works, it works, it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> would you, would you, uh, would you leave for that? Probably I would, but I would, my bet is that they couldn't deal with Sam Altman. It became toxic and that they left because what drives people to leave in all places. You start hating your job, you start hating your manager, you start hating what you do, and there's a lot of opportunity. To your point, there's a lot, a lot, a lot more opportunity. But I think the push is stronger than the pull. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, well, Sam tweeted about this, obviously, and he's saying, you know, all the things that he said before and that anyone in his position would say, they've been instrumental to OpenAI's progress and 
they're leaving it stronger than ever and we're saddened by their departure, yeah. but of course support their decision, all of the, the general nonsense. Look, what else is he going to say? Or what else is he going to do? I do agree. I, I would say it's probably something like 80-20. I think they signed up for a research company or a certain kind of carefulness in their execution. That's what they signed up for. Sam has decided to rotate this to being an incredibly commercial and aggressive company. So they're unhappy about the mission change and they're being offered millions and billions of dollars to go elsewhere. And I, and I think it only needs to be one of those two things ultimately. Um, but I, I don't think we'll ever hear, you know, Mira Marathi say, oh yeah, I left because I was being offered billions of dollars. So they're never going to admit that. But uh, I, I do think that's an important uh, part of the, the equation. All right. Those are our thoughts about OpenAI's corporate structure and uh, their executives quitting and all that stuff. What do you guys think? Is 7% too much equity for Sam Altman? Should he, does he deserve that much? Why are these executives leaving? They keep leaving. What is really going on there? And ultimately, what do you think OpenAI should do about it in the long term? Are they going to be just fine or is this really the beginning of the end? Jump in the comments. Let us know your thoughts.